Hi everyone, I'm Sarah and welcome to another video for Cowshed TV. This time we're bringing you a recap of our winter workshop hosted by the Pennington family which was all about herd health and nutrition. So let's go! We began the day with a foot trimming demonstration from Dave Skellen who explained to us that in most adult cattle the length of the foot from the coronary band to the tip of the toe should measure about seven and a half centimetres or four fingers width as you saw him demonstrating there to gauge the initial amount he's going to trim off the ends. British whites, particularly those which have been outwintered, may not ever need their feet trimming but some cattle can grow their feet faster than others depending on how they've been fed and housed. Some breeders will also choose to tidy up the feet on their cattle for showing. If you're going to do this, just make sure it's at least a couple of weeks before the show so that there's no risk of lameness or sensitivity. Dave explained that his next step was to simply level the sole of the hoof to maintain an even pressure when the cow's moving. He's not looking to reduce the heel height at all, just to return the foot flat to the floor once the toes have been trimmed. This is a diagram of variations of foot and leg alignment in cattle, with either end of the scale being extreme faults and the middle being the ideal alignment for healthy and long-lasting cows. If you notice an animal's feet are actually growing incorrectly as opposed to just getting a bit long, this is something you should consider culling out as it's only going to breed problems in the future. Next we had a chat with Dan Walton from the Dennis Brinnican Group who manufacture a wide range of feed and mineral products. Now Dan's overall message was to try to prevent problems rather than cure them as this is best for overall welfare and can therefore reduce costs. This topic is of course a very broad one but I'll highlight a few of Dan's top tips for keeping your cattle healthy. Yeast, which can be formulated within several different products, is useful in many ways for rumen function. It can help increase the intake of feed and the digestibility of forage, whilst also helping to prevent bloating, which all leads to improved daily live weight gains. Introducing iodine, for example, within a lick bucket formula, will increase the levels in the bloodstream, which can help fight off things like ringworm and warts from the inside out. We talked about liquid feed, which can take many different forms to include trace elements, energy, protein and sugars. Dan said that for many of his clients, particularly on grass-based systems, this is an excellent way to add nutritional value to your grass or forage in the pre-calving period to make sure that your cow has everything she needs for a successful calving and good colostrum. There are also a huge range of hard feeding options such as blends and concentrates all designed to add protein, energy and minerals usually alongside your normal ration of some sort of fibre be it straw, hay or silage. And the best way to find out what could work for you is to speak to a rep like Dan from a local company or even better a few different companies to find out what options they would recommend based on your herd's individual requirements. And the final topic we covered was herd health and disease testing with Susan Carr from Seven Edge Vets who began by encouraging the breeders to take an active attitude with the help of their own vet in preventing health problems occurring by laying out a herd health plan. This in turn can prevent hidden losses such as lower conception rates and calves not thriving as they should. There are various herd health schemes on the market which are regulated by the central body checks and your vet should be able to advise you as to which one they might recommend or tend to work most closely with. Now in the 2019 Breed Journal we featured an article talking about some of the diseases most commonly monitored within a herd health scheme. So if you're unfamiliar with those you can always have a read of that for a very brief idea of what they are. But Susan spoke about how these top five diseases plus TB will be looked for and how we can try to prevent them within a health scheme, starting with BBD, which can be tested for using a blood test or a tissue sample, and you can also vaccinate against it too. Yonis is a difficult disease to eradicate as it doesn't tend to show up until the animals are over two years of age. And because of its similarity to the bacterium which causes TB, a recent TB test may cause a false positive Yonis result. Susan explained that she likes to do any blood testing for Yonis, leaving as long a window since the previous TB test as possible to try and avoid this. 
Fecal samples are usually collected following a positive blood result for yonis to assess whether the animal is currently shedding the disease. And unfortunately, although there is a vaccine available, again, it may interfere with your TB results. So Susan did not recommend using that. Leptospirosis was the next one we talked about, and this does have an effective vaccine, although it's not what they call a marker vaccine, which can be distinguished from the actual disease itself in a blood test. So it's advisable to first test for the disease to make sure it's not in the herd, then vaccinate if that's the route you're going to go down. IBR does have a marker vaccine, and Susan said that the blood test will give a fairly straightforward yes or no answer, which makes this one easier to control. And she advised that any IBR positive cattle should be culled to avoid passing it on to the rest of the herd. Neospora is parasitic and it can commonly be transmitted to cattle which graze across public footpaths as dogs are the definitive host. There's no vaccine for this one as it is a parasite so prevention measures within a closed herd are the best method of control. Now she did also touch on TB as this is also an option within the schemes now and she advised members who are in the high risk or edge areas of England that the TB advisory service offers free on-farm visits to recommend measures which you can take to reduce the risks associated with TB as well as trading options and advice if you're currently under restriction. So that was our winter workshop. I must say a huge thank you to all of our excellent speakers, Dave Skellen for the foot trimming demonstration, Dan Walton from the Dennis Brinnicum Group, and Susan Carr from Seven Edge Vets, as well as Leonie Pryor from Cars Billington, who brought along a great display of their products. Thank you also to the Pennington family and to all the members who came along on the day. It was a really interesting topic to talk about and hopefully we can do something similar again soon. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.